Please thank you, ahead. respective chairman, for your kind <coughs> introduction. Uh, dear colleagues, good afternoon. I'm very happy to be uh, in India once again among uh, uh, warm friends. Uh, today I will talk about a classical issue, the acute uterus, but I will uh, try to create a novel point of view. As a definition, uh, arcuate uterus is defined as a mild indentation of the fundal part of the uterus into the uterine cavity. And uh, as prevalence, by far, is the most common anomaly among all Millerian abnormalities. Actually, American Fertility uh, Society considers arcuate uterus as a variation of the normal anatomy, and it has either no or minimal effect, adverse effect on reproductive outcome. In the study of Sarah Willis, which was published in 2008, they uh, gathered all the literature for the last 60 years without any language restrictions. And they found that the uh, prevalence of the Müllerian anomalies is similar between the general population and the infertile population, but it has a dramatical increase in prevalence among recur recurrent miscarriage population. Uh, in the general and recurrent miscarriage population, arcuate uterus is the commonest form, but in infertile population, the septate uterus is most common. This is a famous diagram showing the classification of all Müllerian abnormalities. It was first proposed in 1979 and then modified two times and accepted by American Fertility Society in 1988. Uh, it's strange that this uh, classification is based on less than 200 uh, cases. In this uh, classification, uh, some forms of Müllerian abnormalities does not exist. So this is not a complete list of the all abnormalities. It may work just a framework for, for the practitioners. And in this classification, as you see, septate uterus is class 5 and arcuate is class, class 6. So far, there is no uh, evidence in the literature of a criteria which describe exactly uh, what a septate uterus or partial septate uterus or arcuate uterus are and the, the differences among them. Furthermore, some of the authors claim that arcuate is a misnomer and it has no dif difference uh, in behavior, in practice, uh, than septum. So there is a lack of consistency in the uh, literature among the studies, and this cons uh, inconsistency is based on three main factors. The first one, there are different diagnostic procedures used in studies. The second, the subjectivity of the diagnostic criteria, and sometimes there are not even any criteria in some of the studies. And the last one is the inconsistency in the interpretation of the classification. Some studies claim that arcuate uterus has an adverse effect on reproductive outcome and it, it has an association with recurrent miscarriage. On the other hand, some others uh, are on the cont contrary side claiming that there is not an adverse effect. So the balance of the existing studies do not support uh, an association of the arcuate uterus uh, and the recurrent miscarriage. I will uh, here mention the, uh, uh, what an accuracy of a test is before uh, switching to the diagnostic modalities. The accuracy is the number of the true positives plus the number of true negatives over all the cases which are true positives, false positives, false negatives, and true negatives. For the diagnosis of Millennium abnormalities, hysteroscopy plus laparoscopy is still the gold standard. Apart from this, in, in uh, increasing order of accuracy, two-dimensional transvaginal sonography, nearly 80% accuracy, expert 2D sonography, 90%, 2D saline infusion sonography, more than 90%, 3D 
3D transvaginal sonografi, 3D selenium infusion sonografi, 100%, just like hysteroscopy plus laparoscopy. And overall, hysteroscopy and laparoscopy, selenium infusion sonography and 3D ultrasound are the most accurate investigations. That's why uh, in our study we chose uh, saline infusion sonography for the routine assessment of the cases. Uh, all these modalities are classified uh, based on their accuracy in diagnosis and, uh, uh, and classifying these subtypes. Class 1A are the tests capable of accurately identifying anomalies with an accuracy of more than 90% and also classifying, able to be cl classifying them into appropriate subtypes. These include hysteroscopy plus laparoscopy, saline infusion sonography, and 3D ultrasound. Class 1B are the uh, modalities capable of accurately identifying the anomal anomalies with an accuracy more than 90% without being able to classify them into subtypes. This includes hysteroscopy alone. And class two, capable of accurately identifying uterine anomalies with an accuracy less than 90%, HSG and 2D ultrasound. And class three, investigations uh, of which the accuracy in diagnosing uh, uterine anomalies is uncertain, which are the physical examination during pregnancy or delivery. Even the hysteroscopy plus laparoscopy is the gold standard the inter-observer agreement is quite poor, even in this modality. Uh, an, an article published in 2013 by Smith and co-workers found, uh, uh, included 78 observers, which are the uh, endoscopic experts, from 24 different countries, and they assessed eight hysteroscopy recordings. And they found that there is fair agreement between observers and for the opinion on the necessity for correction of the abnormality, the agreement among participants appeared to be poor. But most interestingly, the observers from the same country reached a significantly higher level of agreement. By years, we had an observation. Most parous women have thick fundal myometrial uh, measurements just similar with that of women with a history of recurrent miscarriage. And so we decided to conduct this study uh, to pros uh, by prospectively measuring uh, all, the, uh, all the patients' uh, measurement of the myometrium to clarify if an arcuate uterus really is a risk factor for pregnancy loss or is it the result of it. And this is the flow chart of our study. We included all the women without a history of hysteroscopy, and the total number was 341. 17 were excluded because of imprecise image views or intracavitary lesions. We tried the uh, patients into three groups. Group one was the ladies without any pregnancy excluding male factor, tubal factor, endometriosis, or relevant systemic diseases. Group two confined the patients with at least one abortions, and group three having uh, healthy, uh, spontaneous pregnancies with healthy deliveries, excluding the menopausal. We routinely uh, Assess the patients by saline infusion sonography. First, we in mid sagittal region, we uh, measured the fundal thickness of the myometrium, and by sweeping the transducer to the most lateral region, where the uh, myometrium is thinnest in the coronal part, we measured the coronal myometrium, and also in uh, coronal section, uh, we uh, detect if there is the appearance of double cavity. Uh, this table shows the sonohysterography findings of the three groups. The fundal thickness uh, was found to be statistically significantly higher in the group which had uh, healthy deliveries compared with group one and group two. Also, the, the corneal myometrial thickness was higher in group three. And the, the difference between the fundal myometrium and corneal myometrium and the, the percentage of the double cavity appearance were 
uh, tended to be higher, but not reaching a significant level. When we further uh, uh, divide these uh, groups into so subgroups, this is group one. Group 1A is the first IVF trial. Group 1B, history of at least one IVF failure. And group 1C, history of at least two IVF failures. We found that all outcome parameters were comparable among all groups. When we further uh, divide the group 2 into three subgroups, history of one abortion, history of two abortions, and history of at, uh, at least more than two abortions, we found that the fundal thickness was tended to be higher, uh, but not significant, and uh, coronal myometrium and double cavity percentage were similar. And uh, this is the subgroups of group three. Uh, the ladies having at least one healthy delivery, two healthy deliveries, and more than two healthy deliveries, we found that the uh, thickness of the myometrium and the, the difference between the fundal thickness and the coronal thickness were statistically significantly higher. Uh, as the number of the deliveries increase, the thickness also increase. You know the famous paradox, the hen and the uh, egg, uh, which came first? Actually, this situation seems similar, uh, in my opinion. Uh, does arcuate uterus really is a risk factor for miscarriage, or a miscarriage results in an arcuate uterus? Let's go back to our basic uh, anatomic uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, as we know, myometrium consists of interlacing smooth muscle fibers, and the thickness reaches up to 2.5 centimeters in the most thick, uh, thicker, thickest part. During pregnancy, the uh, increase in the uterine wall is mainly by hypertrophia, but partly to formation of new fibers, which is hyperplasia. And after pregnancy, uh, the muscle cells does not decrease appreciably, and the uterus, uh, after involution, uh, regains its size, but the muscular layer remains thicker. So uh, on the left-hand side, just before pregnancy, the thickness of the myometrium, and after experiencing a pregnancy, uh, whatever the outcome is, the thickness remains uh, higher. So. Uh, a question comes up, uh, is the etiopathogenesis different for the septate or, and the arcuate uterus? We know that septate uterus is a fusion abnormality and it's congenital, but arcuate uterus may be congenital, but may it be also uh, acquired. The, the literature uh, which claims that there is an association between the arcuate uterus and uh, miscarriage has two main proposals. One is the higher prevalence of arcuate uterine in recurrent miscarriage cases. And the second, similar pregnancy loss rates compared with those of normal uterine after correction of an arcuate uterine. <coughs> As an objection for the first proposal, there are some studies, uh, patients with two, three, and more, four or more consecutive miscarriages have a similar prevalence of uterine abnormalities. In another study, uh, analysis of more than uh, 1,000 patients undergoing uh, ART, pregnancy rates in women with arcuate uterine and major uterine anomalies were similar to that of the matched controls with normal uterine. An arcuate uterus was not associated with an increase in first trimester miscarriage. In another study, for patients with recurrent miscarriage, similarly birth rates were reported in unexplained group compared with those who had arcuate uterine. For the second proposal, which is the correction of the uh, arcuate uh, shape, results in similar uh, pregnancy and birth rates compared with the normal group, uh, a study published in 2006 showed that the, even diagnostic hysteroscopy with completely normal findings prior to IVF has been shown to increase pregnancy rates in a randomized control study including more than 500 patients. 
In another recent study from Turkey, performing a simple office stereoscopy has been shown to improve pregnancy rates when performed 50 days or less before embryo transfer. In another review, a, re a recent review, <coughs> it was reported that pregnancy rates appear to be increased when hysteroscopy is performed in women with a history of, of failed IVF cycles, and furthermore, pregnancy rates were comparable among the normal or surgically corrected groups. Uh, it was also uh, claimed that even a simple irrigation of the uterine cavity with saline at the time of recent hysteroscopy may have a beneficial effect on implantation. Taking an endometrial biopsy preceding implantation in IVF has also been shown to cause a type of injury that facilitates implantation. And all these uh, interventions may mimic the correction of an arcuate uterus and it may behave in the same mechanism. Uh, a recent meta-analysis suggests that in women with recurrent implantation failure, inducing local injury to the endometrium in the cycle prior to starting ovarian stimulation can improve pregnancy outcomes. So resection or incision of an arcuate uterine might be mimicking the same mechanism. Taking into consideration the lack of a clear quantification and the inconsistency of the criteria uh, makes our proposal stronger. And in, as a conclusion, there still is a lack of universal definition and quantification of an arcuate uterine, and development of well-defined diagnostic standards are needed. Some arcuate uterus cases may be the result of experiencing an intrauterine gestation regardless of the outcome of the pregnancy. Based on the existing information, hysteroscopic resection of an arcuate anomaly does not appear to be universally indicated. And while waiting for the results of future uh, uh, randomized studies, treat uh, treatment decisions should be very limited to only for <coughs> symptomatic patients with high suspicion and without otherwise identified etiology. Thank you.